when this book was, was printed in, 18, in 1551, it, purchasers could buy it as is in black, you know, in, 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 you know, black ink on white paper, or you could buy it hand colored. Hand coloring obviously would add a lot to the price. Indeed, it pretty much doubled the price. Our copy of Econa's Animalium, happily for us, the, the, the person who purchased this did buy the color copy. And a couple of stunning things about it. One is that the color is so vivid and beautiful and rich after, you know, this is 1553, and it, the, the color is just so beautiful and rich. Um, another thing is that obviously it concentrates the pictures, and you can really get a sense of, of where Gessner got things right and where he could, almost couldn't in a way. For instance, he has a picture of an ass, and it looks a whole lot like, like an ass. It's not surprising. There's a kitty cat. Not surprisingly, it's a very accurate picture of a kitty cat. There's also a picture of a beaver, MIT. It's a, it's a little, I would say that that beaver um, is very close to being uh, pretty lifelike, but not quite. The line, again, it is, is pretty lifelike, porcupine. But as I said, Gessner was working in, 15, in the mid 16th century. There were things he could know for sure, things he had to take on faith, but was pretty positive about. And then there were things that, if he was going to try to be a completist, he'd have to just go with. And one of those things would be a giraffe. He'd never seen one. The illustration of the giraffe is pretty close. You can see it's an animal with a very long neck, but when you look really, when you take a moment to really stare at it, the neck isn't quite right. It's much too thick, and the horns on its head are actually pointing the wrong way. But on the same page, there's something that is even more surprising <laughs> yeah. to us, which is a unicorn. Bear in mind that on the facing page is an elephant. Gessner had never seen any of these animals in the flesh. How could he? The giraffe is close. The elephant isn't quite accurate. The ear is wrong. The, the, trunk, trunk, yeah. the trunk is attached in a funny way. The unicorn, that's as realistic a unicorn as I've ever seen. But. Um, we, all, we know now that there's no such thing, but don't forget, Gessner was working from written reports. What had, what had been written out about in his, through the history of, of, uh, of reliable reporting? Well, unicorns turned up a lot in various kinds, in various literature, and e even in, uh, in some religious texts. We shouldn't really be shocked that there's a unicorn in here. There it is. I was actually, if you hadn't mentioned, I was gonna ask you if, there were, if he had included unicorns. Indeed he did, yep. Um, he, as I mentioned that he, that while well, Gessner could draw, he wasn't an artist himself, and in any case wasn't interested in spending his time doing the art. Um, il book illustration in the mid 16th century was, it was kind of, it was the, what, what I'd call the Wild West. If you found, a, if someone had already drawn a picture of a certain thing, and you wanted to, that picture in your book, copy it and put it in your book. The idea of intellectual property, it, it, did, it had no currency at all. This image here of this rhinoceros, may look familiar. This is actually a, 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 an, a, an engraving by the great Albrecht Dürer, a very uh, important artist. It's a, a, a widely known image today. And the, they needed a picture of a rhinoceros. They took one that existed. And I dare say that you know, Dürer and Dürer's estate received no income from their use of that image. Another couple of uh, really interesting uh, animals that appear in here are there's also, there's also this. This is a monster. It's simply a monster, as you can see. It has yeah. three breasts. It has the, its front, it has the sort of the paws of some kind of animal. Its back feet are bird-like. It has a hideous face, a strange, a strange body. And this text, this, this, this brief uh, excerpt of text, says that this was reported in, the, in, the, in a forest somewhere near Salzburg, but apparently the person who reported it was considered reliable by Gessner. He included the animal in here. Again, he was attempting to be a completist. He wanted to be comprehensive in what he, in what he, in what he presented to the world. Um, it was a you know, kind of a heroic undertaking, actually. And inevitably, there would be mistakes that, that he couldn't possibly realize were, were mistaken at the time. Um, these, uh, what else shall I, shall I say about this? The horse, again, beautifully realistic. This illustration of dogs is, is notable. Apparently, it's the first time that anyone had illustrated dogs, several breeds of dogs at once. I think part of the, part of the idea is simply that uh, these are all dogs. They're very different from one another, but we know them all. We all realize that they are all dogs. 
this. The binding of our Econis volume is kind of nice. When we do have classes here in the archives, I'm fond of, uh, of sort of asking the students what they think is inside this, and of course it's cruel because how can anyone know? This is sort of typical too for some of our early books, for anyone's early books. Um, this is a reuse of good, good material. This was a, a great huge sheet of music that was meant to be read from a distance, printed on, on, on vellum, and materials were always costly, so in early, in early production of books and in early book binding, materials were expensive. Human labor could, be, could sometimes be cheap. Materials were expensive. If you could reuse something you did, we're very glad that they did. It's a beautiful binding. That's a, a lovely chant sheet.